Okay guys, let's take a look at these two multiple choice questions. So we have seven sets of identical twins are given psychological tests to determine whether the firstborn of the twins tends to be more aggressive than the secondborn. The results are shown in the following table where the higher score represents greater aggressiveness. If we are willing to assume that the distribution of differences is symmetric about the median, but not necessarily normal, then the value of the appropriate test statistic is this. Okay, so with all of that, the first thing I want to figure out is uh, what land am I in? Am I a mean land or, or proportion land? Am I looking at numerical data or categorical data? And I, as I look at this data, right, this 86, 88, 77, 65, I know there's this difference column here, but this data from the first born of the twins and the second born of the twins, this is some kind of number, and it looks like they were given a psychological test and received a score. So this is numerical data. That means I'm going to be in mainland. All right, and I can see I have two sets of data, right? I have the numbers from the first born of the twins and from the second born of the twins. And again, we're, we're measuring some kind of aggression in these twins. So do I think aggression in the first born of the twins might have some relationship to the aggression of the second born of the twins? And the answer is yes. They have the same DNA, all right? And they live in the same household. So it's very possible that a certain set of twins are more aggressive together, right, between the two of them they, than when comparing them to a different set of twins. And, and you might be like, well, I, I would think they were independent, but no, stats folks love twins because we have this, not we, I'm not a twin, because they have the same DNA and, and they can test so many things on twins where they give one twin the control and one twin the treatment. So twins are paired. So I, again, I have two sets of data, two samples, but these are paired samples because of the twinning. All right, and I'm still gonna use a t-test. And that's what this blurb is telling you to do. It's saying you're not exactly normal just yet, but you're symmetric. So don't use normal CDF, use tCDF, right? We just need a little bit more wiggle room. All right, so with that, I'm, I'm gonna do just a, like an edited version of the hypothesis test here. So, so let me move this up. All right, and try and cram it in. I see example 10 creeping. So here's how, how much room I have. So I'm gonna define mu sub d right now. And if you remember when we were looking at paired tests, whenever you have a paired test, you use that subscript of d. That barely looks like a subscript the way I wrote it. All right, so that d stands for difference. So I'm gonna say this is the true average difference that difference has got to be in your null mean when you're talking about paired data. The true average dis difference in the psychology test, all right? And then I'll just say the psychological test, psychological test. All right, and I had been saying when we did the before and after, I like to go after minus before. Well, let's look at how they did these differences. And you, you could go either way, but they actually presented us with one way. So it looks like I have a negative two here. So they must have gone firstborn minus secondborn because that would give me 86 minus 88 and that would be negative two here. So I'm just gonna write that in my hypothesis that I went first minus second. Okay, so let's take a look at the null and the alternate because we need to know what our null and alternate are before we head over to our calculator to have our calculator help us with this problem. Okay, so here I'm going to say h sub naught, right, mu sub d should equal zero. There should be no difference in aggression, okay? And if you're forgetting the process for a paired test, the process for a paired test is like all the hypothesis tests we ran in chapter nine. So we're gonna set mu equal to some number. And in this case, our, our number is zero. Most of the time when you, you're doing paired tests, that difference is zero. All right, so zero points different, if, if this is out of points, zero points difference on that, on that aggression test. All right, if, if being the firstborn has no bearing or has no difference um, in terms of aggression when compared to being the second born in a set of twins. All right, H of A. Did we have a slant here? All right, 
if I go back up, it says we want to use this information to, to, to determine whether the firstborn tends to be more aggressive. So that more aggressive is our slant. And let's think about it. If the firstborn of the twins is more aggressive, that means they would have a higher score here. So if this number is larger than this number, if it's higher, then their difference should be positive. Okay. Now, I've got alpha being put in my multiple choice part as 0.05. Okay. In terms of the assumptions, there was nothing mentioned about it being random. My data is paired. And we can go make a box plot of the difference to data in a bit. Um, and then I could find the sample standard deviation. So all of that's fine and good. Let's, let's go run through that. I'm going to try and cram that in here. I'll put assumptions. All right, so random sample was not stated. All right. I did have paired data. Let's take a look at the box plot, and then let's find that sample standard deviation. Okay, so here we go. When it comes to paired testing, after you get this difference data, you do not care about your original two data sets. This becomes the only thing you care about, and you're gonna run a one sample hypothesis test off of the difference data. All right, so you have a couple of options here. You can put this stuff in L1 and L2 and create this list, or you can just write these numbers directly into a list. I wanna show you how to use your calculator to get this list, should you ever want to. So you see I put my data in L1 and L2. Let me head over to L3. Now, usually I go L2 minus L1, because I like to go after minus before, but they did firstborn minus secondborn. So I'm gonna define this to be L1 minus L2, and when I hit enter, it's gonna auto-populate. And there you see those numbers coming down the pipe. Yeah. Okay, so let's make a box plot. Now keep in mind, my differences are in L3. For all I care at this point, from here on in, L3 is the only thing that exists. So it looks like I have all three plots off. I gotta turn one on, and, and this one's ready to go with L3. So let me turn it on. Let me hit zoom nine. And that, that thing's roughly symmetric, right? And that's actually what it said. It said this thing is symmetric about its median, but it's not necessarily normal. That's why we're gonna use a T distribution. Okay, so this is roughly symmetric without any outlier, so I'm good. So normality is plausible. Oh, that might be out of view for you. I was making a sketch of my awesome box plot. I apologize for putting that out of view. Okay, so we got that happening. Now for S sub D, again, I could get this right now if I ran one of our stats off of L3, but I'm just gonna wait until my calculator output comes out and see what I get from there. All right, so step six would be that I was on a T distribution. Right. Step seven would be that I'm running a paired mean t-test. Step eight would be my degrees of freedom. I had seven sets of twins, so I have six degrees of freedom. All right. Step nine is our test statistic. And if we remember that formula from back in chapter nine, right, we got x bar minus mu s over square root n. These are gonna all have subscripts of D's because that's the notation we use when we have paired data. So let's take a look. We've got X bar D minus mu sub D, S sub D over square root N. Now for step 10, I'm gonna to have to go to my calculator. I wanna find all those numbers. So let's, let's start going to our calculators. Keep in mind my data was in L3. And if you have trouble remembering which one you're gonna do, Again, in chapter nine, when we only had one sample, and we do have one, or one set of data now, we're only caring about the difference data, we're gonna do stat tests two. So let's do stat tests, I'm gonna do option two. 
Alright, I did have raw data. My null would be that the, the, the difference was zero. My data is in L3. What kind of alternate did I have? I had a greater than, and that's what my calculator happens to be set to. So let me go down to calculate here. And let's see what we have. Okay, so I'm seeing x bar was 4.7. 4.71, the mean would have been 0, S of D was 7.27, and I would divide that by the square root of 7. And let me go fill in S of D in my assumption, so 7.27, okay, points. All right, and this test statistic itself was 1.71. All right, so as soon as I see 1.71 for my test statistic, I know A is gone. I know B is gone, and I know D is gone, all right? Because it's asking me for my test statistic and then what we're gonna ultimately do. Am I gonna reject or fail to reject, right? So is this fail to reject or what do we reject? Let's see what the p-value was. All right, so if I wanted to get the p-value, now I could use TCDF, just so we're clear, I could have gone T was greater than 1.71, and I could have said TCDF low, high degrees of freedom, and I would have ultimately gotten, what was our p-value? It looks like it's about 0.07, okay? But with all that being said, we ultimately have to decide, are we gonna reject or fail to reject? So I have a p-value of 0.07 and an alpha of 0.05. So I kind of ran out of room, but if I was gonna do step 13 here, I would say because our p-value Oops. Is greater than alpha, right? We fail to reject H naught. All right, so we don't have evidence that the first born twin tends to be more aggressive than the second born twin. But ultimately, when I look at this, my answer is C. We would not reject H naught. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at this last one and see if we can figure this one out. All right, I'm gonna scooch this all the way up so we have plenty of room to run this. Okay, so as I read this, let's see if we can figure out, am I in mean land or am I in proportion land? Or another way of saying that is, do I have a numerical variable or do I have a categorical variable? Okay, so a study on road rage asks samples of 596 men and 523 women about their behavior while driving. Based on their answers, each person was assigned a road rage score on a scale of zero to 20. The participants were chosen by random digit dialing of telephone numbers. The two sample T statistic for the road rage study, male mean minus female mean, was T equaling 3.18. We suspect that men are more prone to road rage than women, the p-value for the testing for testing the hypothesis satisfies and there's some interval. Okay, so let's let's take a look at this. They actually told us what we were in. They straight up said, you're in mean land, right? And I see the word mean in here, right? I see that I'm gonna be put on a scale of zero to 20. That's a numerical variable, all right? I, I know I have two samples. It looks like we're testing men and women, all right? And I'm gonna assume those are independent Right? Unless the men, men are in the same room as the women, which I doubt they are, they're just taking these tests independently of one another. And I'm gonna use a t-test statistic, okay? So I've got this test statistic. This right here is step 10, right? They are saying, this is step 10, get to step 11. Right? And in order to do that, anytime you wanna build from step 10 to step 11, you need a CDF. And we're in particular gonna use tCDF. But let's see if we can do a little bit more of this problem just so we can piece this together. All right, I'm gonna start in here at step one. All right, I would need to define mu sub m, right? This would be the true road rate, or true average road rage score for men. And I'll let mu sub w be the true average road rage score for women. All right, and I do need to establish my null and my alternate 
because my alternate will help me determine what kind of TCDF function I'm going to run. All right, so my null would be mu sub m equaling mu sub w. That the road rage scores or the average road rage score for men is the same as the average road rage score for women. And we saw the slant here, right? It said males are more prone. So we're suspicious that mu sub m is greater than mu sub w. Okay, that's great. So from here, I'm actually gonna cut to the chase. Let's say we did steps four through 10, right? If I did steps four through 10, and I finally ended with 10 at 3.18, right? We found our test statistic of 3.18. Can I get to the p-value? All right, can I get to step 11? Okay, well, let's see. My p-value, it would be a probability and I need a letter, a symbol, and a number. Well, I'm on the T distribution, okay? I have a greater than alternate, and my test statistic was 3.18. So if I wanna run this, I'm gonna go with TCDF. And we know we go low, high, degrees of freedom. So low, high, and then we get a little stuck, degrees of freedom. Okay. All right, what on earth do we do about degrees of freedom? We have that really ugly formula that I gave you, and then I said we'll never use, and we're not going to use it. Um, so you could try to plug into that formula, but you would even get stuck there. So here's what we do. We use what we call a conservative estimate. You have 596 men and 523 women in your sample. So let's take the smaller of the sample size, all right, just to be what we call conservative, to play it safe. And let's pretend this was your only sample. If you had a sample size of 523, that would mean you had at least 522 degrees of freedom, right? If we did sample size minus one. All right, and in actuality, you have way more than 522 degrees of freedom. You have closer, a, a general rule of thumb, you could, and you, you would need the formula to check this, but you have closer, if I subtract two, one for each group, you have closer to like 1100 degrees of freedom. But we're gonna say you have at least, so I'll put this over here, my degrees of freedom is at least 522, which is a huge number. Again, remember for normality you need 30. Right? This is gigantic. So I'm gonna put 522 here just to play it safe. Okay, so let's go try this TCDF. All right, 3.18. 1E99, and then 522. So I'm getting not 7.8, but don't forget the e to the negative 4, so 0 0.00078. All right, or I'm just going to round this. This is 0 0.0008. All right, great. We are so close. What we got to do is figure out where is this wedged between. All right. So let's see, is 0 0.0005 less than 0 0.008? And it is, right? Five is less than eight. They both have three zeros, all right? And is 0 0.0008 less than 0 0.001? It is, because 0 0.001, there's only two zeros here, there's three zeros here. So if I rounded, 0 0.008 would be in here. All right, or what I mean when I round, this would be about 0 0.001. But again, this is technically smaller than 0 0.001. So let me make that distinction. All right, and it doesn't fit in any of these other intervals. So it just happened that A was our answer and that was the one I was checking first, okay? Now, if you ever wanted to, I, I've mentioned that some statisticians do this, but I don't ever adhere to that philosophy. But I just wanna show you, if you wanted to, if you wanna say, hey, you know what? 522 degrees of freedom is so many. It's well past the 30 for the central limit theorem. So some teachers, some statisticians will actually go ahead and use normal CDF. And I want you to see how close they are in this case. So if I did normal CDF of low, high, mean, standard deviation, because I would have had a z-score, all right, you can see that these numbers are pretty close, right? This is 0 0.00074 and this was 0 0.00078. So they're super close. They're off by four, I think that would be 10 thousandths at that point, right? 
tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousand, ooh, hundred thousands. So they're very, very, very close. Okay. All right. So with that, that wraps up the problems we're looking at in chapter ten. I'm going to take a moment and just summarize everything we've done in chapters nine and ten, and kind of give a preview of where we're going. All right. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.